NASCAR Coast to Coast here on the Motor Racing Network, presented by Whelan Engineering and also brought to you by Hercules Tires. I'm Hannah Newhouse, joined, as always, by my co-host, Kyle Rickey. And this weekend, Mother Nature rained down her wrath, and that is both literally and figuratively, as a lot of racetracks east of the Mississippi pretty much washed out their weekend shows, and we thought that was going to be the case with the ARCA and Xfinity races at Talladega on Saturday afternoon. But Mother Nature decided to send it up to the Carolinas and let Alabama have some sunshine as the General Tire 200 was able to take place uh, Saturday afternoon with just a slight delay. And Corey Heim would be the one to sweep both Dega and Tal- or both Daytona and Dega being the second person to do that, joining David Keith, the first one to do it since 1992. But second place and on Kyle was the real story of the weekend. Yeah, that stayed made her the third, uh, well into his 60s, his uh, home racetrack. I did some stats. He, uh, he's run ARCA before. In fact, he's run ARCA since 1983. His last top five, way before you were born, in 1991, also at the Talladega Super Speedway. So I can't wait to have him on here in a little bit uh, to chat about uh, his run on Saturday afternoon. Uh, and then you have all the youngins lined up behind them, Nick Sanchez, Drew Dollar, and uh, Brett Holmes finishing third, fourth, and fifth in a uh, fairly eventful race there at the Talladega Super Speedway. Yeah, it was. Came down to a single lap shootout where they pretty much got the green-white checkered attempt. There was some pushing, including Thad Moffitt pushing Dave Mater to that second-place run. Some carnage early on in the race as well, including that of Ty Gibbs taking him out early, so we know he'll be looking for some redemption. This up-and-coming weekend as they hit the track at Kansas for the Dutch Boy 150 on Saturday. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. But you mentioned Dave Mater, and he will be joining us here shortly. Uh, Interesting story there as well. You know him if you follow short track racing from the Snowball Derby. Won the Snowball Derby in 1978. Again, well before I was born, but has a handful of... before I was born. Yeah, has a handful of ARCA starts, uh, also in NASCAR's top three national series. And I got to watch his post-race interview that they did with NASCAR Home Tracks. And you want to talk about elation and excitement and to see that like raw emotion. I feel like sometimes we don't see that as much anymore, Kyle. These drivers some of them you know they come to expect the wins and then they get them and they continue to get them and the excitement of a win wears off I want to say to some extent um you'd have thought Dave Mater won that race you know and there's a lot of pressure on the young drivers to thank the right people (laughs) and you know to go through what they're trained to go through in that moment. And, you know, obviously that training was not around when Dave Mater first got into the sport. It was a completely different world back in, in the 1970s and in the 1980s. And, you know, it's like, what, what brought him back? I think it's the biggest question because we hadn't really seen much of Dave since the late nineties or early two thousands, you know, he made some cup starts until like 92 made some Xfinity starts, I think made a truck starter too. But then he was, you know, off the national map anyway for quite some time until 2018. And then he, uh, he started to show back up at Daytona and Talladega and I think Michigan. He likes Michigan. So um, interested to, to see what brought him back a couple of years ago and obviously talk about that run the other day. Yeah, that he does. He does like Michigan, that lone ARCA win of his happening again, 1991. Yep. So we're going to talk to Dave here about that runner-up finish as well as what brought him back to racing. But we're going to take a quick break here first on NASCAR Coast to Coast. Whelan Engineering, a global leader in the emergency warning industry, designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights. Whelan also produces white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for automotive, aviation, and mass notification industries worldwide. Every part of every Whelan product is proudly designed and manufactured in America and is tested on site to meet the toughest industry certifications. Whelan Engineering, a global leader in the emergency warning industry, trusted to perform since 1950. 19- 52. Citywide to countryside, whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there no matter where the road takes you. Go to HerculesTires.com. There you can find the nearest authorized Hercules retail location to you. Plus, you can use the tire tracker to find out which Hercules tire fits your vehicle the best. That's HerculesTires.com. Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. We talked about 
about the General Tire 200 in the previous segment here and the storyline coming out of it being that runner-up finish from Dave Mater III. And he joins us here now on NASCAR Coast to Coast. First off, Dave, thanks so much for taking some time out of your day to come hang out with us. Oh, my gosh. Well, thank you for having me. It was definitely exciting when you came across the line and finished second. Again, it had been almost 30 years since your last top five finish. Could you believe that second place finish there, and how did you uh, capture those emotions? Uh, well, I, I wish I could uh, express somehow the emotions uh, was ecstatic. And how cool is that to do it, you know, be able to come back 30 years later and and all that stuff and be 65 is just uh, <laughs> what a thrill. It's just a thrill I can't explain. How was your race as a whole, Dave? Uh, obviously, you know, obvi we're talking about the second place finish, but, uh, you know, it was a 76 lap event. Any close calls out there? And, and how was the car throughout the entire race? Well, there was a couple close calls. Uh, uh, there the first race, I got into the 11 car by accident a little bit, and thank goodness they recovered. And then, uh, when the 35 and 18 and the 44 hit him and I was behind him and yeah, oh, there's always going to be a close call. It seems like Uh car was great. Uh, Jeff Spraker and gives me a, a great piece. And uh, finally uh, everything lined up for us and we had a pretty clean day for a change. And how about that? 65 year old guy running second. Isn't that cool? <laughs> It definitely Absolutely. was cool to see. Yeah, for sure. I know uh, a lot of folks took to social media sharing the sentiment of how excited they were just to see that finish for you. But Kyle and I talked about it a little bit at the top of the show. Uh, you've made a handful of NASCAR National Series starts, ARCA starts as well. But that kind of stopped in 1994, took a break there, and came back in 2018 to make some select starts. I want to know the thought process and the conversations that took place in saying, hey, I think I'm going to go back racing again. Well, really, I haven't quit racing. Uh, I just, you know, wasn't doing any ARCA or CUP or, uh, you know, expenses or truck stuff. You know, I did a little bit of all of it. And it's just uh, situations, you know, I, my family didn't have money. And uh, I grew up in the Birmingham area with the Alabama gang. and that's kind of how I got my other opportunities of people that knew me and knew my record and winning my four national touring championships in the eighties and, and all the things I've done, I've had a great career and for it to come back around like this, uh, full circle, uh, is just fate. And I guess the way it was supposed to be, I, I don't know. I can't explain it or I don't, I don't know what else to tell you, but uh, I'm just having a great time, and uh, we've been patient and hadn't had, you know, great races because of the incidences or something going wrong, you know, which that's just racing, and and finally we have a clean race, and, and here we are. How about that? And having a good time doing it. Uh, Hannah mentioned it had been a while um, until 2018 that we didn't really see you in the national spotlight. Um, of NASCAR or ARCA. What did bring you back you know, two years ago, now three years ago, to, to some of these, you know, plate races? Well, you know, uh, everything I've done, I've done pretty well. Uh, I just didn't mm -hmm. get to do it enough to uh, shine like uh, maybe I could have. You know, you know, I just didn't get my 10 or 15 or 20 year career. And the select few races I ran, you know, I've run good a couple few times you know and it just kind of got bought out of the seat and you know wasn't able to you know finance my own stuff as far as that was concerned so I just short track race and you know did what I could and I mean just the love of racing you know I'm just a racer and uh, uh, you know I'm just so lucky a, a, a lady came into my life and she's my car owner and she believes in me and uh, so here we are. And I have to ask, moving forward, I know you guys do run a select schedule. What does a run like this do for, you know, not only your team, but you'd mentioned the sponsorship side of things. What does this do for your guys' team overall? 
Well, anytime you do well, uh, it's fantastic. You know, we run a short track cars that, you know, here in the Southeast and, you know, I still win races there one, two weeks ago. And, and we come to Talladega and run second the next week. Uh, well, any, anything is a shot in the arm and that's just been kind of a, an uphill battle. And we feel like kind of, we, you know, went over the top and coming down the other side, you know, with a good finish finally. And, uh, we're look forward. We're going to go to Charlotte and try that with our car and, I'm going to run my short track car this week and then my sprint car in two weeks. And then we're going to race Charlotte and I'm just having a great time. Let's see between the, you got the sprint car, the short track car, the ARCA car, you're staying really busy. We're, we're talking about Talladega, but let's talk about some of your short track stuff. Where do you run weekly uh, when you're, when you're not with ARCA? Actually, I've just been running at Montgomery, Montgomery, Alabama. We run there. Uh, the car and the class is kind of a one-off deal there. You can run it like at three tracks, Avery, Huntsville, Montgomery. And so uh, we, you know, have been running at Mobile and Pensacola and Op. And they were kind of disgruntled with us a little bit and said I'd won too much and had too much experience. So they didn't really... Uh, feel like I needed to be in that deal. So we went to the Montgomery area and we run the super late model on 80 inch tires there. And now I got my sprint car and the ARCA car. So we're just, we just do it for fun and we're just having a good time. You got to love it. Racers just want to race. Doesn't matter where it is or what it is. If they get the opportunity to race, they're going to do just that. And I got one final question here for you. Um, a lot of the folks that are short track racers at heart, when you did get that second place finished, the sentiment got brought up of that snow snowball derby win. And as a late model racer myself, or well, past late model racer, that snowball derby at the end of the day is such a prestigious win. Where does that stack up uh, in the memory book? And do you have any, you know, uh, big memories that stand out for you from that snowball derby win? Well, there's no doubt it's at the top of the list, uh, you know, to beat Mark Martin, you know, in that race uh, was just huge. and coming around after my cool down lap he was there to congratulate me one of the first people and i always thought the world of mark and was so glad to see his career was you know what it was and i mean he wasn't the only one there i mean you can almost name every big name in the business and you know it was a huge win the 11th race and now we're in the 50s you know, 53 or 4 whatever it is it's a Certainly at the top of the heap, uh, you know, my start at the Winston, the first night Winston is huge. And, uh, you know, I've just got so many things like that through my career. But the snowball definitely is at the top of the heap. There's no doubt about it. You uh, you mentioned a little bit ago, you kind of grew up with the Alabama gang, your very first ARCA race at Talladega, 1983, won by Davey Allison. Uh, how close were you with the Alabama gang? And, and even Red Farmer's still out there. I think I saw him at the Talladega dirt track this past weekend. Uh, you know, you, is there still a relationship there? Well, absolutely. Uh, you know, I mean, I grew up in Homewood, which was on the kind of the southeast side of Birmingham a little bit. And in Hueytown and Bessemer was on like the uh, northwest side of Birmingham. And we raced every week. With Bobby, Donnie, Red, Neil Bonnet, Daryl Waltrip. Oh, my gosh. You know, every week, you know, uh, some of the greatest names in the sport. Uh, I grew up in a, a, a bee's nest, you know, so I, I contribute that to help me, you know, have a good career that I have had and uh, still wanting to have. And I'm going to win me one of these super speedway races. I really look forward to Daytona next year. Uh, my car is great. And uh, so, yes, I had some great people around me that I grew up with. And the Alabama gang is still alive and well. But there's just, a, you know, I'm probably about the only one left, you know, that's racing me in red. <laughs> How about that? Yeah, you love, you love to hear it. Again, so cool that you got the experience and got the chance to race against those guys. Call a lot of them friends because someone like me, again, 
those are legendary names that uh, I really only got to read about that got to race. Uh, but Dave, again, we're so excited to watch you the rest of this season, especially up coming at Charlotte. And uh, hey, you already foreshadowed it. Daytona next year uh, is one that you've got circled on your list. Again, congrats on that second place run. We'll be in touch with you for sure. And thanks for coming on NASCAR Coast to Coast. Thank you so very much for having me. And, and I just can't tell you how excited I am. Thank you. Awesome. Again, that was Dave Mater the third runner up in the general tire 200 this past weekend for the ARCA race at Talladega. But coming up, we've got your wheel and engineering modified spotlight here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. Whelan Engineering, a global leader in the emergency warning industry, designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights. Whelan also produces white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for automotive, aviation, and mass notification industries worldwide. Every part of every Whelan product is proudly designed and manufactured in America and is tested on site to meet the toughest industry certifications. Whelan Engineering, a global leader in the emergency warning industry, trusted to perform since 19. Sir, are you aware you were going 40 miles an hour? This is a residential area. Sure, but I'm on my lawnmower. Wait, am I getting a ticket? No, I've just never seen anyone top 9 miles an hour on one of those bad boys. And mow their entire lawn in 30 seconds? What got into you? Well, it did fuel up at Sunoco this morning. At Sunoco, we know how to fuel peak performance. We've been doing it for American racing for over 50 years. Fuel your best. Since 1972, the Half Mile Stafford Motor Speedway in Stafford Springs, Connecticut has hosted what has been dubbed the greatest race in the history of spring, the Spring Sizzler. That first race was promoted by three businessmen and motorsports enthusiasts in the Northeast in Bruce Cohen, Lou Boyd, and longtime motorsports journalist Dick Berggren. The 1972 version saw over 100 cars entered, with the win going to Lenny Bowler's Old Blue number 3 team and driver Fred DeCero, a team that remains competitive on the NASCAR Wheeland Modified Tour today. One of the most memorable finishes came nine years later in the 1981 running of the race, as heard here on the Motor Racing Network. Overary leads it. It'll be two laps to go. V pulls to the infield and Paul Verary opens up a one car length lead into turn number three. Evans closes. The white flag is flying and Richie Evans has one more shot to win his third spring Sizzler. White flag. Evans dives to the inside. Richie Evans goes downstairs, entering turn number one. Pulverary stays high. Evans trying it again to the inside. Pulverary gets squirrely. Evans inside, side by side to turn three. Evans has the inside. Pulverary is up high. They come out of turn number four. Stutter between the turns. The fans come to their feet. They are side by side, running for the finish line. It's a photo finish. It's a photo, and we'll have to wait for the scorers. As Evans and Pulverary were separated, by no more than an inch in the closest finish in Stafford Speedway history. The scoreboard shows goose eggs as they wait. It's Pulverary. He wins it by inches over Richie Evans and the Spring Sizzler comes home to New England. It was Pulverary's first and only Sizzler win. In more recent years, the race has been a part of the NASCAR Wheeland Modified Tour schedule. Each year since the tour's inception in 1985, except for 1988. The late Ted Christopher has six wins in the event, while six-time tour champion Doug Coby has four, including the most recent spring sizzler held in 2019. The 2020 version of the race did not happen due to the global pandemic, and the 2021 running of the event was supposed to happen last Sunday. But thanks to Mother Nature, the 49th running of the Spring Sizzler will be held this Friday night at the Stafford Motor Speedway and can be seen live on NBC Track Pass.
Whelan Engineering, a global leader in the emergency warning industry, designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights. Whelan also produces white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for automotive, aviation, and mass notification industries worldwide. Every part of every Whelan product is proudly designed and manufactured in America and is tested on site to meet the toughest industry certifications. Whelan Engineering, a global leader in the emergency warning industry, trusted to perform since 19. 19- Well, Mother Nature tried to rain out all the racing action, but wasn't entirely successful. The Old North State Nationals with the Cars Tour at Orange County Speedway was supposed to be a two-day show Saturday and Sunday with the Carolina Pro Late Model Series, but was washed only to a Sunday show. $30,000 on the line. It was Josh Berry who returned to the Cars Tour for the first time this year. Collected that victory in an insane battle with Deke McCaskill coming to the checkered flag over Tyler Matthews. Good run for Matthews as well. Uh, Wenatchee opened up their season at Wenatchee Super Oval out in Washington for the Leonard Evans 150. They hosted the New- uh, Northwest Super Late Model Series. Hayden Plybon collected the victory over Bryce. Bazanson and Donnie Wannett and Slinger opened up their season as well with late models. Casey Johnson took that win over Jacob Notstead and Dale Notstead. And we should mention Kingsport Speedway had their opener. I believe it was last week. Nick Williams picked up the late model win over Wayne Hale and uh, their next event this coming Friday night, which includes one of my favorite events, a chain race. I love those chain races. I don't know why. Those are the ones uh, with South the Boston. one in the front, right? They've got the guy driving with the driving. No, he's yeah. Or is it just the train cars? I think it's just cars chained together. But doesn't one have the brakes and the other one has just the gas? Well, those are the cars where they're on top of each other, like the double deckers where the guy in the top is steering and the guy on the bottom is... Has the gas and brake. Gas and oh, brake. I thought the I chain cars chain had... Right. One has brakes and one doesn't. Whatever. Either way, Kyle, I... we should get in one of those. And no, we should. And be, <laughs> that would be the end of this show because one of us would be in trouble. Yeah. Um, Mananoc Speedway opens up this weekend up in New Hampshire. Uh, Going to be a great uh, two-day program up there, which will feature the Sportsman Modifieds. And Bowman Gray Stadium, the North Carolina restrictions lifting enough for the folks at Bowman Gray to say, we can open. And they have not turned a lap there now almost two years. They'll, they're going to open up on June 5th with the Hayes Jewelers 200. So uh, look forward to seeing the Modifieds uh, getting back around Bowman Gray because it has been uh, far too long. I know all the fans in that area, I'm sure as well, are very excited to get to Bowman Gray because if you have never been there, you need to go. It is a bucket list experience all in its own simply to go to Bowman Gray. The racing, great. The people watching, even (laughs) better. So again, the fact that they're going to be able to have people there is a huge contributing factor to that. But also this upcoming weekend, we talked about the rain delays, unfortunately, last weekend. The spring sizzler was supposed to be at Stafford Motor Speedway. They went ahead and called it a little bit early to save teams some travel and have rescheduled it to this upcoming weekend, May 1st. Uh, Kyle, I have a feeling you will be there. I will be, and it's Friday night. Um, I think April, whatever the last day in April is. So um, the rain date is going to be on Friday, May, or Saturday, May 1st. Hopefully it doesn't rain um, and we can get a full night of racing in on Friday night had opening day for the local teams last Saturday. Great crowd, great car count. Uh, new winner in Tyler Hines in the SK Modified. So a uh, great way to open the season. Yeah, also this upcoming weekend, we talked about it just a little bit ago. The ARCA Series back in action at Kansas Speedway for the Dutch Boy 150. That race will be Saturday on Fox Sports 1, 1.30 p.m. Eastern start time and also before they head into the weekend. We want to send our thoughts and prayers out to ARCA driver Derek Lancaster was involved in a wreck on Saturday's ARCA race at Talladega. Um, We have gotten a couple statements that we've seen from his wife, Kyle. Sounds like he is on the mend, obviously had a uh, a hard time, was on a ventilator for helping with breathing and some burns, but sounds like things are on the up and up. Yeah, I think the ventilator was precautionary according to one of the posts, uh, just to make sure that uh, he... There's no more lung damage or any lung damage uh, from all the flame and, and smoke he uh, unfortunately had to inhale during that crash. Um, weird incident, just turned right into the outside wall and, and literally the car exploded. Uh, has second and third degree burns on arms, neck, and face. Mm-hmm. So hopefully uh, he can heal up quick. But uh, uh, tough hit, tough outcome. It was good to see him get out of the car under his own power. And uh, that a lot of this is 
uh, as far as the ventilator is concerned, precautionary, uh, just to make sure that there is no lung damage. Yeah, definitely sending some good prayers over his direction. But again, we want to thank Dave Mater the third for coming on today to talk about that second place finish this past weekend. And good luck to all of the drivers and teams that are headed out racing this weekend, as well as the fans that are able to attend. We appreciate you supporting your short tracks. I'm Hannah Newhouse for Kyle Ricky, producer Craig Moore and Alexa Henry. And we will see you guys next week here on NASCAR Coast to Coast.